I'm Patrick Windhorst, 118th District State Representative. I represent all or part of the southernmost 11 counties. I'm a resident of Metropolis and Massac County. I'm joined today by House Republican Leader Jim Durkin and Assistant Minority Leader Ryan Spain, as well as Assistant Minority Leader Deanne Mazaki. Before being elected to the Illinois House, I served for 14 years as the Massac County State's Attorney. I've prosecuted criminal cases of all kinds and have worked directly with police officers and deputy sheriffs to build cases and put dangerous people behind bars. Earlier this month, on the first day of the spring session, I led a news conference at the Capitol to announce the introduction of H.R. 598, a resolution that calls for the repeal of the Safety Act. A House resolution is a vehicle we use to give a sense of our priorities as we go through uh, our General Assembly. But I promised at that time that I would be filing legislation that accomplishes the goal of repealing the Safety Act. Today, I join Leader Durkin and Representatives Spain and Mazaki to announce the filing of multiple pieces of legislation to make good on that promise. We're now a year out from the passage of the excessively flawed Safety Act. Crime is up, our friends and neighbors are less safe, and our law enforcement officer's job is harder than it has ever been. Ending cash bail for violent offenders, allowing detained subjects to make unmonitored phone calls, prohibiting arrest for certain criminal offenses, and allowing unlimited anonymous complaints against police officers is the wrong path for criminal justice and for public safety. In recent days, I've watched with amazement as some House and Senate Democrats in Illinois have floated their anti-crime agenda for the spring session. Before the passage of the Safety Act, we warned them what would happen, and it has. Crime is rising, police officers are being shot at and killed, murders are up across the state. Innocent victims are in an even more dangerous position than they were a year ago. Police departments, large and small, are seeing early retirements and struggling to recruit officers. With the recent statements, it seems some legislative Democrats who supported the original Safety Act may have, be having a serious case of buyer's remorse. Well, I welcome any House Democrat who voted for the original law and now recognizes the error they made to join us. Let's make Illinois a safer place to live, work, and raise a family once again. Sign on as a sponsor to the Safety Act. We welcome you. To sign on as a sponsor to the repeal of the Safety Act. We welcome you to this effort. The legislation filed by Representatives Spain and Mazaki and myself shows that House Republicans are serious about restoring law and order. We must repeal the Safety Act and its problematic provisions to keep our citizens safe, to restore order in our communities, and to demonstrate to our brave law enforcement officers that we've got their back. I'll now turn it over to Assistant Minority Leader, State Representative Ryan Spain. Well, good morning and thank you very much, Representative Windhorst. Uh, thank you all for being here. My name is Ryan Spain, I'm a state representative. I represent the 73rd legislative district in the Illinois House. When Democrats defund the police, when Democrats damage the police, when Democrats demoralize the police, it has significant and grave consequences to the safety of our communities across the state of Illinois. I have never seen anything more reckless than the Democrats' passage of House Bill 3653, the Safety Act, that took place one year ago in January. Remember what was happening in our state one year ago. On January 13th was the day to swear in a new General Assembly, the day to elect a new Speaker of the House, a, a, a day that many have looked forward to in the state of Illinois. And instead, this day will be remembered for the passage of a damaging and dangerous bill that has created real consequences to the people of the state of Illinois. This legislation was introduced at 3 a.m. on January 13th. It contained more than 700 pages of legislative text. It was debated on the House floor for 30 minutes with only two Republican legislators being recognized and allowed to ask questions about this bill. And the bill was passed with the bare minimum number of votes, 60 votes in the House for final passage. It was a very bad start to a new day in Springfield and a day that has proven to be very damaging for the people of the state of Illinois. 
The consequences that we warned would happen are taking place now throughout the state of Illinois. Crime has skyrocketed. Carjackings are taking place at an out of control rate. Retail theft is up. Violent crime has risen. Murders in the city of Chicago have reached over 800 murders in 2021. In my community, my hometown of Peoria, we had 34 homicides. When I served on the city council for 10 years in Peoria, if we came anywhere close to 20 homicides in our community, it was a citywide crisis. Now that's just a regular day in the state of Illinois with the damage that has been created through this legislation. We warned of the consequences and we told you what damage would be done to the law enforcement community. We're seeing record numbers of resignations from police officers, deputies, and sheriffs throughout the state of Illinois. Of the 102 counties in our state, more than half of those counties will now have a vacancy in the sheriff's office, uh, which directly corresponds to the passage of this safety act. This has been incredibly damaging and dangerous to our community. And anyone that's an elected official has a solemn duty to help protect the safety and welfare of the citizens that we represent. Illinois has taken a very bad and dangerous turn for the worse. And so today we are here spreading the message, adding emphasis and urgency that the way that we go forward is to repeal House Bill 3653. We must repeal the Safety Act, which has been damaging and dangerous to the safety of the people of the state of Illinois. And now I will uh, introduce our uh, Republican assistant leader, Representative Deanne Mazaki. Thank you, Leader Spain. Good morning, everyone. Deanne Mazaki, State Representative for the Illinois House District 47. My hometown is Elmhurst, and I'm also a member of the Illinois House Judicial uh, Criminal Committee. Democrats have filed a lot of legislation to change our criminal laws over the last decade, and they've been focused on decriminalizing, defelonizing, and making as many excuses as they can for criminal behavior. Last year during the lame duck session, we got a few hours to look at a 764 page piece of legislation and we got a half hour of debate. They've called the bill the safety act, but in reality it was hasty and it was in poor judgment. We warned you that this would make crime even worse. Welcome to reality. You can't pass a bill designed to defund, demoralize, and decertify police officers and expect that much good is going to come of that. I said last January that the events of the last few days in the outgoing General Assembly highlight the brokenness of the legislative process down in Springfield. The Democrats passed this legislation in the middle of the night under cover of darkness precisely because they didn't want the people to know what they were doing. They didn't want the people to have input because ordinary people know that this is not common sense to make lives harder for police officers and easier for criminals. Now that the chickens have come home to roost, the Democrats are hearing from the public and the people are not happy. Now they say, now the Democrats are making all kinds of noise that they really do like the police. They want to fund the police and they're trying to backtrack off their prior votes in the hopes that you're going to forget exactly what they voted for by the time we get to the November election cycle. But if they want to be held accountable to the people in their districts, if they actually want to make sure that the people in their districts voice actually counts, they should sign on to our legislation, such as House Bill 4499, to make sure that they can actually go on record and say, we do not agree with this. We regret our vote. We're willing to turn things around and actually start getting back to the negotiating table so we can have a meaningful discussion with the input of the people so that we don't create yet another criminal law disaster. If they want to do it, they can do it. They're the majority party. They can make this happen. They have the governor in his office who's been signing for just about anything they wish. This is the time to make it happen. And this is the time to finally look out for the people in their district, not the political activists. We can get this right. 
we can come together to carefully consider the right action we can take that is going to promote second chances for people, but is also going to protect our residents. The Safety Act was not the way, it shouldn't be the way, it shouldn't be allowed to continue forward, it should be repealed. And with that, I'd like to turn things over to Illinois House Republican Leader, Jim Durkin. Thank you, Representative Mazaki, and uh, good morning to everyone and uh, to also my colleagues. My name is Jim Durkin. I'm the House Republican Leader from Western Springs. Um, and I also want to talk a little bit like my, about my background, like Pat Windhorst did. Uh, Pat was the prosecutor down in Southern Illinois. I was a prosecutor at Cook County at 26 in California, where I served in the Narcotics Bureau and also the Felony Trial Division. I've investigated, indicted, and tried every uh, conceivable case under the criminal code. I understand the rules of procedure. I understand how the interactions between uh, police and the prosecution works. Uh, and it is a very, very uh, complicated, but also extremely important duty for the protection of citizens in Cook County and also throughout the state of Illinois. So uh, I'm here to say that uh, it's time and time again, over and over, we have seen what the Democrats have done uh, in Illinois, uh, whether either blissfully ignorant or actively trying to undermine our criminal justice system, one which we've spent much time in. Uh, it's a complicated system, but one which is extremely important. The bills that they have passed, the Democrats, have crippled law enforcement, broken our court system, and have created a consequence-free Illinois for criminals. As we see the results, and we see these results every day, whether it's on the television, in the newspaper, or on the radio. It's heartbreaking on a daily basis, and it just gets worse. There was a headline in the Chicago Sun-Times yesterday. It says that more than half of those shot in Chicago Tuesday were 17 or younger, including a 15-year-old boy killed on the north and west side of Chicago. Ten people shot in Chicago, six of them children, on a Tuesday. Illinois has become the wild, wild Midwest. And that is not, some, that is not something we should be proud of nor laugh about. The Democrats in this state have allowed this to happen to children, families, and all of the residents across Illinois. And, we're, we, and the residents across Illinois are paying this price for these failures. And now after polling has finally woke them up, they are claiming they need to get tough on crime. It's interesting that those who did support this bill, who were all high-fiving and hugging each other last January, are now rolling up their sleeves and saying, we got to get to the bottom of this crime epidemic. Well, they're a little late. They are late. But I also say that they cannot be trusted on this issue. Just a few weeks ago, the Democrats uh, attempted to make a, fine, a minor fix or a tweak to the problems they created when they rushed to dismantle law enforcement in Illinois last year, last January, with this defund a police bill, 3653. And this has to deal with the issue of phone calls allowed for a person who is in custody. The bill will now allow, which has been signed into law by the governor, will allow domestic abusers to call the wife, the girlfriend, or the child they abused from the lockup a minimum of six times while they are being detained without any restrictions at all on what they can talk, what, can, what they can say to those individuals and what will happen. It will be calls of intimidation. Do not cooperate with the police or else. That is not fiction. That is reality. Both Patrick and I can tell, about, tell you about that. We've lived through that. The same can occur for a street gang member who's being held. Call the family members. Move the drugs. Move the dope. Don't cooperate with police. This is ridiculous. It's reckless. I raised these issues on the floor of the House of Representatives and the sponsor of the bill was not able to respond at all to these questions that I had for him and the reality that is coming from the bad decisions that they were making. So uh, I will also say that just last week, another House Democrat member introduced a bill, House Bill 4527. Now listen to this, that would allow for a offender charged with any crime, any crime, whether it's mur murder, rape, or carjacking, to avoid criminal prosecution by participating in a diversion program by just signing a consent form uh, without having the victims have any interplay or any interaction in this decision. And the goal of this, to uh, allow for reconciliation between the, the charged individual, the person who shot the gun, the person who raped the daughter, 
to reconcile with the victim and also the community, to go through sensitivity training, sensitivity training, and also uh, to ensure that the whatever the societal influence were on that were, at, were present at that time have been addressed with this offender. It's called get out of jail free. This was just within the last two weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm floored and I don't know what exactly the Democrats have learned over the last year when they passed House Bill 3653. And there was a bill that passed out of the House just this past spring, which will defelonize the possession of fentanyl, heroin, methamphetamine. Fentanyl is probably the largest, if maybe the second largest public safety concern in the United States. And the Democrats are treating it, this crime, as if it's an open six pack of beer. They are horribly tone deaf on issues relating to public safety time and time again. So first, the Democrats have, they've, they've broke our state financially, they've ruined it ethically, and they have now ended the rule of law in Illinois. We need to repeal House Bill 3653, start over and start getting serious with criminals. Uh, myself and also everyone on this call is prepared to negotiate to do something fair. Negotiations did not happen last year, and they clearly didn't happen in January when this bill was passed in the waning hours of the uh, lame duck session of the General Assembly. 